Hey dudes, it's not very often that Canon nails the price to performance quality pyramid, but they have with the Canon RF 14-35 f4 IS USM lens. It's Canon's latest premium ultra-wide zoom lens designed for full-frame cinematography and photography work, and it's an absolute delight to use. So let's get into it. Many moons ago, I purchased these lenses. Combined, they cost more than the RF 14-35. And while these two lenses both have faster apertures, neither has optical stabilization, a programmable control ring, or the resolving power of the newer RF glass. Combined, they also weigh more than this RF 14-35. And that's before you buy another lens like a 24. But what if we compare this to the more premium 15-35 RF zoom? Yes, it's one stop slower with a constant f4 aperture, but you gain a lighter, more compact design, wider field of view, and a closer focusing lens, all while saving you 700 US dollars. And for some photographers, that is a big deal. This lens is ideal for handheld cinematography, street photography, pet, landscape, real estate, interior design, and architectural photography or cinematographers who want to emulate that wide-angle look of The Revenant, The Dark Knight Rises, or The Tree of Life. Pairing this lens with a red V-Raptor, Canon R5C or R5 would be a perfect match. But even stay-home creatives can enjoy this lens, as it's perfect for making small spaces seem larger, as I'm doing now. I can't say that I'm a fan of the polycarbonate plastic design. Even though it's weather sealed, sturdy and robust, the plastic build makes it feel cheap to me. But that doesn't mean it isn't perfect for modern photography or cinema cameras. It sports a 77mm filter thread size, but more on this later, weighs only half a kilogram. It sports the same tromboning external zoom design as the Canon 28-70, but it doesn't have a zoom lock to prevent the lens from drooping in the future like what has happened with my older Canon 24-105. Putting this aside, the included lens hood does feel cheap for the price tag, and it isn't that useful for controlling lens flares wider than 24mm. And finally, the lens's rubberized rings all have a nice tactility to them. They turn with the right amount of resistance, are responsive, and are all smooth throughout their ranges. The 14mm focal length makes this an ultra-wide zoom lens. Now, numerically speaking, the difference between 14 and 17 may not sound like much, but at the low end of the scale, each additional millimeter has a dramatic effect on field of view. You can see here a 14 mil and 17 mil on the right, but now let's compare a 14 mil prime lens, 14 to 35 zoom. As you can see, the 14 mil prime has a wider field of view. Now let's zoom into 35 and swap the 14 prime for 35, but this reverses the equation. Now the 35 prime has a narrower field of view than the zoom. This is due to how bad older EF lenses breathe when focusing. Make of this what you want. The first thing to note is that Canon doesn't allow users in photo or video mode to turn off distortion correction. As you can see from the chart, at 14 mil, the barrel distortion is pretty bad. And in the corners of the image, the amount of vignetting is undesirable. The extreme corners remain completely dark, even if you stop the lens down to f11, with lens distortion only starting to straighten out around 24mm. At 35mm, we start to see a bit of pincushion distortion becoming visible, while at 35mm, we see vignetting is now mild, even when we are wide open at f4. As for sharpness, the following was shot on my R5 at 45 megapixels. At 14mm wide open, we see the lens exhibits excellent sharpness and contrast in the middle of the frame. Corner sharpness is reduced, but the lens retains acceptable contrast. The corners keep this level of sharpness down to f8, but stopping down to f16 softens the entire image due to diffraction. At 24mm f4, the middle of the image looks very sharp, and it's here where we see much better optical performance, with the image corners matching the center image quality. The lens stays this sharp until stopped down to about f11, and finally, 35mm at f4, the image quality isn't the sharpest. The corners of the image look softer, and we only see a slight improvement when stopped down to f5.6, where the middle of the image is looking excellent and starts matching the edges. We see the same results at f8, a slight improvement in edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, but when we stop down to f11 or darker, softness begins to emerge, again due to diffraction. What this highlights is this lens has great performance in the middle of the zoom range, 
but at the wide and telephoto lens angles, the corner of the image quality does suffer. With the camera now moved into 20 centimeters at f4, when zoomed out to 14 mil, the image quality looks fantastic. And when stopped down to 5.6, it yields even sharper images. But at 35 mil f4, the image sharpness is poor, but does get much sharper at f5.6 and is excellent around f8. The lens also performs well when shooting subjects against a bright light source. Lens flaring is well controlled, and for video work, the flares are quite pleasant. There is little sign of chroma smearing color shifts or chromatic aberrations. The corners of the image are not looking smudgy, even at f4, and sun stars appear well controlled all the way down to f16. As mentioned earlier, this lens is image stabilized, which can come in handy when you are shooting at the lens minimum focus distance of 20 centimeters, as all movement becomes exaggerated. Or if you're doing long exposure work or filming in windy conditions, combining the lens IS with Canon's IBIS will yield the best results. Here are some quick handheld tests. First, with no IBIS and no image stabilization. Now with lens IS turned on, Next, IBIS with lens image stabilization. And finally, IBIS with lens image stabilization turned off. I was totally blown away by the lack of lens breathing in the 14 to 35. Canon nailed it. Regardless of the lens angle, the 14 to 35 doesn't suffer from noticeable focus breathing. So if you're looking at this lens for video work, this lens is the best option for you in RF mount. But there is also another reason why. Over the past years, Canon has been an industry leader with the most cinematic AF system on the market. But one place they have fallen short is their USM AF lenses are not exactly quiet for video recording. The RF 14-35 combats this by including Canon's new Nano USM AF system and it's a big win for videographers and photographers who want silent lenses. It is dead quiet, but how well does the 14 to 35 AF system work? To test the 14 to 35's autofocus responsiveness, accuracy and lens breathing for video, I set up a repeatable move on my Axio slider. I shot at 100 frames per second and only used the standard R5 AF settings. The results show the 14 to 35's autofocus response is snappy and super sticky producing organic and smooth focus transitions from near to far focus. The lens did not hunt for focus, had zero problems locking onto and tracking a subject's eye. Even at the lens's minimum focusing distance, it got the job done and done well. And for photography, when paired with either the EOS R or R5, the AF responsiveness was lightning fast, super accurate and super sticky. So with either of these, camera lens package combinations, the lens had no trouble finding focus even when five stops underexposed. Manual focusing was a little less organic for both photo and video. The focus ring is a little narrow and I find it too close to the front control ring. So you can find yourself frequently turning the wrong lens control like I did. Further to this, a big negative for video work is the lens has no hard stops. Luckily though, the focus scales show up in both the EVF and the on-screen monitor, plus you have the onboard focus assist tool, which is industry leading. As a quick side note, this lens is not par focal and I would not expect it to be for the price point. The 14 to 35 produces very creamy bokeh, and like most close focus lenses, performs best when the subject is closer to the camera. While zooming in will produce pleasing bokeh, the quality of bokeh is much smoother and dreamier at f4 when the focus fall off is pushed to the extreme and the subjects are closer to the lens. Stopping down the lens does produce a harsher focus fall off and more depth of focus. So if your subject is more than six feet away and you are looking for a shallow depth of field, you should change to a much faster prime lens and use filtration to control your depth of field. This lens supports a 77mm filter thread while a common size, using filters on a 14mm lens isn't. When compared to an EF 14mm, look how bulbous the front glass element appears, which makes it hard to accessorize and a pain to work with. As you can see, the RF 14-35 front element is less dome-like, which is unusual for a 14mm lens. 
So this is rather exciting because you can now use inexpensive filters with ease on a Canon wide angle lens. You no longer need specialized filtration. But still, for photography, to avoid vignetting or seeing the filter at 14 mil, I would recommend spending a little extra money and buying a step up ring for a 90 mil size filter. And for video work, grabbing a small rig lightweight matte box pro with the variable ND filter, which will cover most of this lens's range. Then you'll be able to avoid any filtration vignetting. Unlike the Canon 28 to 70 with its huge glass elements, I didn't find using the 14 to 35 more taxing on my R5 batteries than other lenses, meaning it didn't have a noticeable effect on the runtime when the lens was in operation. Like other RF glass that I own, the 14 to 35 iris response time is slow. On one hand, this could be used as a creative tool by cinematographers, as the iris movement itself is very smooth and it appears almost stepless. But for photographers, this really could be the difference between getting a shot or not getting the shot. So for the cost of this lens, the iris response time is unacceptable. If you're looking at buying this lens for video work and are planning on using a control ring, then you might want to get it declicked. It's loud. With all of that said, this is a special lens in so many ways. And while it may not be the sharpest or the fastest Canon zoom on the market, it is a handy one to own. For a lot of people, this lens won't make sense because of the price point. But if you were to buy a separate 14mm and 35mm, it would cost you more. And this is where the value proposition of this lens becomes clear. It's true value for money. The fact that Canon has been able to squeeze a 14mm lens into this tiny zoom is incredible. Canon gets top marks for build quality and ingenuity because the optical quality is second to none. And it is a real joy to use. It works with front filters, which is rare for a 14mm lens, has fantastic image stabilization, highly controlled flaring, chromatic aberrations, edge sharpness, and vignetting. So it can produce amazing images, which should make you question whether you need primes at all. The truth is I have found this lens so versatile up to 35mm and so good, I haven't removed it from the camera since purchase. And with that, see you in the next one.